Hello, and welcome to the PyTorch Summer Hack 2020. I'm Brad Heinz, and I'm a partner engineer with the PyTorch team. If you're not sure what a partner engineer is, it means that my day job is making sure that developers like yourselves get the absolute most they can out of PyTorch or related tools. In this video, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of setting up the PyTorch mobile runtime in an Android project. To follow along, you'll need Android Studio 3.5 or higher, and you'll need to have Gradle installed. You should also be using PyTorch 1.5 or higher. PyTorch offers native runtimes for iOS and Android, allowing you to bring your machine learning app to mobile devices. Including the library in your project is a one-liner, but there is more to do getting your model set up for best performance on mobile. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your project to include the PyTorch runtime, how to export your model to TorchScript, PyTorch's optimized model representation. How to add your model to your Android Studio project. And how to call the model from your code. Let's get to it. For this demonstration, we're going to build an image classifier into an Android app. First, we'll create the project. I'm going to create an empty activity app. I'll set the target language to Java and the minimum SDK version to 28. In the build.gradle for your project, make sure that jcenter is listed in your repositories. Now we'll add PyTorch to the build.gradle for the app. This will bring in versions of the PyTorch Android library for all of the Android ABIs for ARM and x86. It will also bring in a library from TorchVision that contains helper functions for converting Android in-memory image types to PyTorch tensors. Next, I'll show you how to optimize your model for use on mobile. So first things first, we'll import PyTorch and TorchVision. And this is a good place to point out that uh, you should be using uh, PyTorch 1.5 or higher for this example. In the next cell, uh, we're going to create a PyTorch model object. Now for the actual app, I have a uh, pre-trained uh, optimized model ready to go. Um, but for the optimization process, I wanted to show you this on a custom model uh, so that you could duplicate the process with your own models. Now, this model happens to contain some very common layer types, a 2D convolutional layer, a 2D batch norming layer, and a rectified linear unit for activation. And the forward function just strings those three operations together. So now that we have our model, how do we optimize it? First thing, let's get an instance of the model. In my get model helper, you'll notice that besides just instantiating the model, I call m.eval. So uh, eval turns off things in the model that you don't want on during inference time. Uh, training only layers like dropout, uh, automated gradient tracking, all this training related stuff eats up CPU cycles and we don't need it for inference. So we're going to uh, make sure the model is in eval mode. Uh, the second thing we're going to do is some layer fusion. Uh, fusing layers means taking uh, multiple operations and combining them together into a single operation. Uh, this improves performance and memory footprint. Um, now, with the fuse modules uh, method that I'm going to show you, um, there are only certain uh, combinations of layers that you can fuse together. I'm going to refer you to the documentation for the latest information on that, but here we're going to try to fuse together a convolution a batch norm and a ReLU. Uh, once uh, modules are fused, uh, the next thing we're, we're going to do is quantize the model. PyTorch tensors default to using 32-bit floating point numbers as their underlying type. When we quantize, we're going to change that to an 8-bit integer. This will uh, perform faster and uh, reduce the model's footprint both on disk and in memory. The final thing we're going to do is save the model as TorchScript. TorchScript is an optimized format for your model, including both your computation graph and your learning weights. It's meant to be consumed by the PyTorch Just-In-Time Compiler, or JIT, which is included with the PyTorch mobile runtime. So once it's exported, we'll save. Now, there are subtleties to layer fusion and to quantizing your model that you'll want to be familiar with when you're optimizing your own model for use with PyTorch Mobile. All of this is covered in the PyTorch documentation for quantization, which I encourage you to check out. We'll need to add some resources. I'm going to add my model file, 
Of course, you should use your model exported to TorchScript and an image for the model to classify. I'll put them in a new Assets folder. I'm also going to add one source file that just contains a string array of the human readable labels for the classes my model is trained against. Next, we'll put together a UI. I'll have an image view to show the image we're classifying, a button to start the inference process, and a text view to show the result. Now, watching me set up UI constraints is not very educational, so let's speed through this bit. Now, let's fill in the code for our activity. We'll make a couple of private members for our image and our model. Next, I'll add a helper function that gets the absolute path for an asset. PyTorch Mobile expects a file in the file system for the model. Next, we'll fill in the onCreate. That's a bunch of code, so let's take it a piece at a time. First, we get the bitmap and model objects. We wrap these in a try block because if there's an issue with either, we can't run the app really. Next, we'll fill the image view with the image, and we'll set up an onClick listener for our button. Inside the onClick listener, we're going to convert our image to a PyTorch tensor. We're going to pass that tensor to the model for classification and receive the output. We'll find the model's most likely class for this image and its human readable label. And finally, we'll report that label in the text view. So let's run it now and see it work. And there's our cat. We press the infer button. And sure enough, uh, our model thinks our cat is a cat. Success. Thanks for watching, and thanks for participating in the PyTorch Summer Hackathon 2020.